Shatavari gets a lot of attention as a female reproductive tonic. It's a heavy aphrodisiac and estrogenic uh, female reproductive tonic. Uh, it's also outside of the reproductive tract, a moistening anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial for all uh, conditions of dryness and deficiency. So let's uh, get into uh, Shatavari. Uh, there's a picture of it. You can see the, the many uh, roots in the plant and some of the above ground uh, aerial parts as well. All right, Shata Vari, uh, what does it mean? Uh, the Shata is 100. Vari means husband. So it loosely it translates to one who possesses 100 husbands. And there's a lot uh, in the name of, of an herb. Uh, and that uh, name is given to Shatavari because it increases libido and nourishes the female reproductive tract. But also the name implies it's somewhat indiscriminate. So is this uh, 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 Love Potion Number 9 herb? Uh, if you've ever heard that song, um, Love Potion Number 9, where the, the uh, singer starts kissing everything in sight? Uh, we'll review the hormonal effect of Shatavari and whether or not Shatavari can uh, interfere with a bonding um, and uh, in addition to its qualities as uh, an aphrodisiac. All right, it's also known as the queen of herbs because it promotes a more yin uh, demeanor. It is a uh, member of the asparagus family. Uh, the particularly the the botanical name is asparagus racemosus. So it's in the same genus as the asparagus that we eat. Uh, asparagus comes from the Greek, and um, and sparjau uh, means to be swollen or turgid, refer referencing uh, the roots. Right, these roots look like they are swollen. All right, racemosus uh, simply means cluster or stem, so a cluster of swollen roots. Uh, uh, asparagus racemosus, or shatavari, is a close relative of safed musili, also a reproductive tonic. Some of its other names are shatamuli in uh, Bengali, uh, and that means 100 roots. And uh, in some other dialects and languages of India, it means uh, the Shatavari is named milky potato or chopped banana or mil uh, buttermilk root. So it has a few different names. Um, great. Again, the essence of Shatavari. Uh, it is a heavy aphrodisiac and estrogenic female tonic, a moistening cooling anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial for all uh, deficiency conditions uh, and he for all deficiency and heat conditions. Uh, so if you are hot and dry, Shatavari may be your herb. Uh, it is heavy, thick, sticky, and sweet as an herb. Uh, one student described it as soft, fluffy, moist, and chalky. Overall, it has taste characteristics similar to licorice root in that it's sweet and bitter. Uh, Shatavari does not have any of that licorice anise flavor, but it's sweet and bitter. It's similarly, licorice root is sweet and bitter. Um, I always uh, think of uh, Shatavari as like a Lucky Charms marshmallow. Um, that uh, I, I grew up in the 80s, and if uh, we pleaded uh, with my mom uh, long enough, uh, occasionally, maybe once a year, she would buy us Lucky Charms marshmallow cereal. And uh, those uh, marshmallows in the Lucky Charms marshmallow cereal had the same texture and sweetness as uh, Shatavari. And so I always think of Lucky Charms marshmallow when I have Shatavari. Uh, it has a bitterness, and uh, you notice that bitterness fo first, and then uh, it fades away into sweetness. And sweet taste is a gentle secondary uh, taste, but that uh, it is quite sweet um, if you hold it in your mouth. All right, I'm just I had some uh, Shatavari just before our conversation, and the I can t still taste a little of the bitterness on the mouth. Uh, the sweetness is mostly gone at this point. This is you know five or six minutes ago. All right, uh, it is an oily, moist, heavy. Uh, cold and slimy herb 
uh, slimy. It doesn't taste that slimy, but it increases um, moisture in uh, in the body and uh, and and nourishes fluids and uh, lubricates the channels of inf of elimination. So it has a sweet vipak. Uh, it can increase ama in excess. It's vata pitta pacifying and kapha aggravating. Uh, loosely, that translates to it uh, replenishes in deficient conditions. It's it cools or clears heat, and because it uh, builds and nourishes, it can, it can be kapha aggravating. Uh, Shatavari, uh, like most herbs, act on all tissues, but it has a particular affinity to the female reproductive tract and digestive tract. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, Shatavari, uh, some pictures and photos of it. Really important to look at the photos of an herb. Our instincts are wired to understand uh, plants and their pharmacological effects. And so a critical aspect of learning an herb is looking at it. And, um, and so we have detailed uh, photos and, um, and want to talk about everything from its habitat to, um, uh, to its particular botanical features uh, so that you can um, tune in to some of those pharmacological effects. Uh, Shatavari is harvested uh, both wild and it's also cultivated. It lives in a subtropical to tropical environment. Uh, it needs very little rain once established, but it does prefer well-drained, uh, rich black soil. It, uh, full sun is ideal, but it can grow in partial shade and it grows in the Himalayas, Nepal, Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, Australia, and tropical Africa. It can grow uh, one to two meters tall. It's a perennial. Uh, one to two, two meters would be about six foot. Uh, so perennial plant. Its aerial growth is very different from its below ground uh, features. So its aerial growth is very thin, wispy, and etheric. It's almost dainty and very bright in appearance, like a green feather duster with these small, dainty, elegant white flowers. Its leaves are delicate pine needles. Uh, these above ground parts, of course, are exact opposite in nature to the roots. I mean, look at those roots. Does that look etheric to you? Absolutely not. Uh, it looks like a oily mass of, um, of roots, oily, moist mass of roots. And so the above ground parts uh, and the below ground parts are kind of opposite uh, to each other. So it's a tricky plant, right? You almost have to like cut off the top and just look at the bottom. Or what does that mean that the, uh, that, you know, the, the above ground parts of the plant are totally opposite to the below ground? I, I don't know. We could probably have some interpretation of that. Um, but it, I, I'm just going to say it's a tricky, it's tricky from that, for that reason. Most of the substance of the plant is below ground. There's your botanical sketch. Uh, feel free to pause on these slides to uh, get a better look. Let's take a look at the berries. Look at this fruit. So these berries are kind of interesting. They're not just exactly round, but kind of nodular. Look at this berry here, little nodular uh, berries with a sort of cool red color. Look at that. Look at the nodules on that. Um, uh, the berries are cool and red in color. and that sense, they seem... Uh, they seem luscious, juicy, and not quite fiery like the vivid fire-colored berries of ashwagandha. Uh, ashwagandha is a male tonic uh, that uh, nourishes testosterone, uh, where Shatavari nourishes estrogen. And that testosterone uh, plant, ashwagandha, uh, has fiery red uh, berries and is, has a warming uh, uh, energetic to it, uh, whereas these be berries have a sort of cool... Uh, red color and um, and that uh, you know it speaks to the more cooling nature of Shatavari. I have to say these berries look remarkably similar to the uh, baboon in estrus right so that these berries just look estrogenic uh, to me they're, they're just those nodules uh, I mean look at this berry here it looks very similar to the to the baboon in estrus in fact the word estrogen comes from the word estrus um, or uh, yeah, estrus, and that's uh, used to describe an animal that's in heat, 
uh, and that points to the aphrodisiac nature of estrogen, uh, as well as some of the other properties uh, that estrogen uh, causes fluid retention and also uh, weight gain. And, um, and you can see the swelling um, on this uh, baboon in, uh, in estrus. And that points to just a little bit about uh, what estrogen does. It creates heat in the sense of desire, uh, but, uh, but otherwise estrogen ends up actually being somewhat cooling, uh, tonifying uh, to, uh, to the body, kapha aggravating. So again, uh, these flowers, very delicate, very dainty, very unlike uh, the roots of Shatavari, which are more substantial, sweet, uh, yin tonifying, and yin tonifying. Uh, these tiny white flowers do have a gentle, sweet fragrance. And, uh, and then look at the, the leaves. I mean, it, it's, like it, it's like the above ground parts uh, are well suited to the desert uh, because there's just very little um, uh, substance there. And uh, plants in arid conditions will sometimes do that uh, to avoid moisture loss. If you have this big, broad leaf, uh, the plant will experience more moisture loss and won't be able to hold on to that hidden moisture beneath the soil uh, that Shatavari has, or like a cactus um, uh, holds it all uh, in the above ground parts. But this is like, uh, Shatavari is like a cactus where it, it stores it all below ground instead of above ground. Again, look at that mass of roots, Shatamuli, a hundred roots, um, as opposed to Shatavari, a hundred husbands. The appearance of the roots don't really match that light feathery appearance of the leaves. There it is again, the cross section. You can even see the moisture in the cross section of, uh, of this herb. And then you see it's dried out and they still look oily when you dry them out. So the roots are pale in color. It looks like if you grinded them up and pureed them in a blender or uh, you can make milk with these. And uh, Shatavari is a galactagogue and uh, and so it does improve milk production. It's, uh, it's also demulcent and nourishing. Uh, so altogether, um, Shatavari is a cooling, oily, moist herb that thrives in warm, dry climates. And so it opposes its ecological niche. Uh, Shatavari uh, nourishes all cases of deficiency and heat but is contraindicated for cough individuals. Let's get uh, down into the uh, medical use and pharmacology of Shatavari in uh, the next videos.